must be regarded as the personification of an order of learning. For Plutarch identifies him beyond question with the holy doctrine or the mystery tradition. Now remember I told you Osiris is the symbol of the sun. But the sun was the symbol of the power of the all-encompassing God of the universe. And later you're going to learn that the light or the sun represents something even deeper. It represents, dear listeners, primordial knowing, the gift of intellect. And where people can read these myths and think that these people really worship the sun or some god somewhere, they are mistaken. For the true object of their worship is the intellect. And through the use of that intellect, they believe that man will become God. As Thoth, personifies the whole sphere of knowledge and it was through his assistance that Osiris came into being so Osiris embodies the secret and sacred wisdom reserved for those who were proficients in the ancient rites unquestionably Osiris was later confused with other members of that vast pantheon of divinities which developed in the decadent period of Egyptian religious culture but to the elect the initiate, the adept, the priest. He represented to the end primordial knowing, that utter realization of truth undefiled by intellection, unlimited by any mortal procedure, uncircumscribed by the limitation of thinking. You see, he signified not only that divine at one with the absolute which is the end of all illumination but by his life death and resurrection revealed the means by which mortal consciousness could achieve that end now remember at one moment thus Osiris becomes a dual symbol being in the first place the esoteric wisdom esoteric folks means hidden so he represented in the first place the esoteric wisdom itself and in the second place the composite order of initiates through whom that tradition was perpetuated and now we begin to strip the veil from the mysteries the personality of Osiris thus typifies the institution erected by the ancients to perpetuate the deathless truths of the soul the living head was crowned with the plumes of wisdom and power. The hands bore the scepters of the three worlds, but the body was bound with the mummy wrappings of the dead. Here we find spirit, the living head, bound incongruously to matter, the mummified body. The soul was imprisoned in the narrow bonds of flesh, one thing through my research is certain Osiris represented the secret doctrine prior to that time when the omnific word or the lost word of Freemasonry was lost Osiris is the first of the five children of Nut and here you begin to part some more veils behind which the mystery resides he therefore corresponds with the first of the five divine kings of China and the five exoterically known Diana Buddhas of Lamaism. The five children of Nut are the five continents which have appeared upon the earth and the five races which have populated these continents. Osiris is the primitive revelation of the first race. But as Isis was born upon the fourth day, we find this tradition coming into Egypt through the Atlantean mystery school of which Isis is the symbol, and you will find at the base of all of these things Atlantis.
in this country the Freemasons established the city of Atlanta as the new Atlantis. And all of this will come together for you. It took me many, many, many years of study deep into the night and trying to discuss this with other people who had no idea what I was talking about. So most of it was put together in loneliness late at night and then when I established my organization known as the Citizens Agency for Joint Intelligence many others begin to help and furnish, furnish bits and pieces of information. And we have succeeded folks in infiltrating the Lodge. We have members in the Lodge who feed us information constantly. Members whom we taught how to take an oath so that the oath of Freemasonry would not be binding upon them. You have to play sometimes by the rules of the enemy in order to beat the enemy. And we are beating the enemy now. From the reign of Osiris we glean the following philosophical history. They believed that there was a time, the golden age, when truth and wisdom ruled the earth and this aristocracy of wisdom was a benevolent despotism and that's what they want to reestablish. Benevolent to who? <laughs> that's the question. In which men were led to a nobler state of being by the firm, kindly hand of the enlightened sage. This was the divine dynasty of the mythological priest kings who were qualified to govern humanity by virtue not only temporal but by divine attributes. Through his priests Osiris, representative of the hidden tradition, ruled the entire world by virtue of the perfection resident in that tradition. Don't miss tomorrow night, folks. You have not even begun your journey. Good night and God bless each and every one of you.